Hi everyone, Gregory here, not only code. Today I'm going to talk about improving skills. Traditionally, professionals are referred to either as generalists or specialists when it comes to their skills. And we programmers fall into the specialist category. We are expected to be experts in some narrow area. However, when you check job descriptions of senior developers, you will notice that the requirements section often contains 5, 7 or even 10 or more items. You might be expected to know two or three programming languages, to know something about security, networking, accessibility, database, and on top of that you should be an expert in communication and agile methodologies. Truth to be told though, as programmers, our jobs became increasingly complex over years and in order to produce good software, we really need to use different set of tools. We don't need to be experts in all of them, but we need to have some basic understanding and ability to use different tools. So I know that probably you have a long list of skills that you would like to acquire, a long list of things that you would like to learn, but there's never enough time to practice all of them. So today I will be talking about how to structure the list of things that you want to learn and how to decide which ones you should focus on and how much time spend on them. Without further ado, let's start. The problem with this specialist generalist concept or some derivative concepts like a T-shaped person or pie-shaped person is that it has just two categories of the expertise. The first one is basic understanding and the second one is being an expert. But there's much more to learning and understanding things than just these two buckets. What I often see in resumes that I review is that people try to evaluate their skills and put their own scale from 0 to 5 or 0 to 10. For the purpose of this video and the technique that I'm going to show, I'm going to use a four level scale. Level 1, the lowest level, is what I understand. This is a level where you have some theoretical understanding of a concept, but no practical experience with it. For example, I used to work in loyalty programs business. So I understand the concept of loyalty programs, I have some basic understanding of economy of loyalty programs, however, I do not have any experience in designing a loyalty program and I certainly wouldn't be able to do so. Level 2 is what I can do. This is a level where you have certain practical experience with a certain skill, but you are nowhere near being an expert in this area. You might be able to do something, you might be able to do it correctly, but the output of your work might not be of good quality. For me, an example of a skill that falls into this category is cloud computing. I've used to work with various cloud services, I have some experience managing servers, but I am nowhere near being an expert in cloud computing. I can do some things there and I can do them correctly, but the quality of my work is not very good. And I certainly feel more confident if someone who's more experienced in cloud computing checks my work before it is released. Level 3 is what I'm good at. This is a level where you feel comfortable with using certain skill. And while you might not be an expert, you might not know everything about it, you are quite confident in the quality of your solution. An example from my career would be front-end development. I've worked with JavaScript and TypeScript for quite some time. I've had some experience working with Angular or React, although I've never been an expert in any of these technologies. So while I can write a front-end for web applications, and I know that the quality of my solutions will be good, I do not feel very confident designing a front-end architecture from scratch, and I certainly wouldn't call myself a front-end expert. Finally, the top level, level 4, what I'm expert at. This is a level at which you consider yourself a very proficient person in certain skill. And by expert, I don't mean that you are in top 1 or 10% of people in the world that are using this skill. I mean that you feel very comfortable with it. You feel very comfortable using this skill and you know that the quality of your solutions will be good. An example for me would be Ruby on Rails framework. I've worked with Ruby on Rails for a number of years. I've written a bunch of applications in this framework, both simple ones and very complex applications. I made some tiny contributions to the framework and I read a bit of its source code so I know more or less how it works internally. While I wouldn't be able to write such a complex framework from scratch, and certainly there are tons of people who are more experienced in Ruby and Rails than me. I feel that I'm kind of an expert in this area. I put all these levels into a pyramid shape. Why pyramid? That's because I believe that this shape fits the nature of expertise. The top of the pyramid is very small and it cannot fit many skills. 
because you can't be an expert in many things. However, the lower you go, the more skills you can fit into other categories. So you can be good at more things that you can be expert in, and you can understand many, many more things that you're good at. So now let's go to planning your future skill set. As a junior developer or mid-level developer, you certainly have a lot of skills that you would like to learn. You might not have any skills that you would put right now on top of your pyramid because you do not feel that you are expert in any particular area. However, the pyramid of skills technique can be used to plan your future skill set. For this purpose, next to the pyramid of your current skills, you should put the next one with kind of your wish list. What are the skills that you would like to be expert at? What are the skills that you would like to be good at? What are the things that you'd like to be able to do? And what are the things that you would like to understand? Once you have two pyramids, you can see what are the differences between them. For example, your knowledge of TypeScript might be right now on level one or two, but you would like to be good at TypeScript. So you know that you want to move it from level one to level three. And maybe you would like to be an expert in Rust. So it's on top of your wish list. However, you don't know it now, so it doesn't exist in your first pyramid. Before you start working on a pyramid, remember two things. First, the broader skills you put there, the fewer of them you should have. So for example, if you put programming as your top skill, you might not want to add anything else there because programming is a very broad concept. Ideally, you should put something more specific because programming might refer to web development or game development, which are two very different disciplines. For example, if you put some programming language there, like Rust or JavaScript, this is already a more specific and better idea. On the other hand, you shouldn't go too specific. For example, if you put Angular Router there, that's just not a very significant concept. And second, remember to add some non-technical or so-called soft skills there. Remember that being a software developer is not only about writing code. It's also about being able to communicate well to build a good product. That's why some more personal skills like creativity, open-mindedness or leadership are very important and it's good to put them there to keep an eye on them. I've prepared two examples that you might use as a reference if you decide to use this technique and to write down the skills that you would like to learn. The first example is a junior front-end developer working at an insurance broker company. As a junior front-end developer, I would like to become expert in React.js. While React might seem like a too narrow thing to put as a skill, I believe that it is quite broad because it's not only a library, but a whole ecosystem of libraries. Therefore, I put it on top as my primary skill. On the third level, I put four things. First is CSS, because I believe that as a front-end developer, I should be pretty good at styling. Then I put GraphQL, which my company doesn't use at the moment, However, I'm personally interested in learning it and I hope that I will be able to use it professionally in the future. Next is accessibility, which I consider very important and I would like at some point to be a go-to person in the company when it comes to web accessibility. And finally, I put communication because I believe that being able to communicate well with your teammates and with stakeholders and with your clients is very important as a web developer. On the second level, I put the skills that I want to be able to use. However, I don't think that I will be expert in them. The more technical skills on this level are code review, refactoring and web performance. On top of that, I added empathy and creativity, which are non-technical things, but also very important for me. And finally, on the lowest level, I put a bunch of things that I'm personally interested in and I would like to understand them on basic level. Among them are more technical things like machine learning, but also insurance industry. Even though my job doesn't require me to really understand the insurance industry, I believe that understanding it will help me to communicate better with the product team. The second example is a full stack developer working at a software house. In this case, I put two technical skills on top of my pyramid. Go programming language, which I'm using currently at my work and which I'm very passionate about, and software architecture, because at some point I would like to be a technical lead that will help design different applications for my clients. On the third level, I put Angular Framework, which is commonly used in my company and which I need to understand as a full stack developer, and refactoring because I believe that it is very important in order to write maintainable code. On top of that, I put time management and problem solving. 
which are not directly related to programming, but are skills that I consider important. On the second level, again, I put things that I will not be expert in, but I want to be able to use them. So CSS is something that I will be using as full-stack developer. Agile methodologies is something that I need to be able to work with, especially that I will be working with multiple clients. Client communication and open-mindedness are very important when you work at a software house and you communicate often with clients. And infrastructure is something that I'm just interested in. And even though I do not work with server infrastructure on a daily basis, I would like to be able to do basic server management. And on the bottom level, I put some free example skills and there will be many, many more things there. Now that you know how to write this pyramid, the question remains how to determine what should you focus on and how much time you should spend on practicing different skills. While I don't think that there is one best way to determine how much time to spend on each category of skills, I believe that a good rule is that each higher level should have higher percentage of your time than the previous one. So for example, going from the top, we could have 40% on the top level, then 30, then 20, and then 10% on the bottom level. That's because in order to achieve expertise in some area, you need to spend much, much more time than just to get a basic understanding of it. And I'm not talking about five or 10 times more time. I'm talking about 100 or 1000 times more time. For example, in order to learn how to build a simple static website, you might spend 10 or 20 hours doing some course and then practicing. However, in order to become an expert in web development, you might need to spend thousands of hours. So the difference between these levels is huge. That's why your focus should be primarily on the third and fourth level. These are the skills that require most of your attention. While you should keep an eye on the bottom two levels and not forget about them. If you decide to use this pyramid technique, please remember that this is an exercise that you should be looking at from time to time. What I mean is that your pyramid will be changing. Your current skills will change because you will learn new things and you will forget some things, but also your interests will change. Maybe you will switch to another job that will require you to know different technologies and to practice different skills. So it's good to have a look at it from time to time, maybe every couple of months, to see whether you are focusing on the things that you decided to and to see whether the pyramid that you build is still relevant for your career. Before we wrap up this episode, two more things. First, you will be able to practice certain skills at work. However, at work, your main goal is not to learn something new, but to solve some problem, implement some solution. Therefore, the process and the pace of learning at work is different. When you learn something for the sake of learning, you might experiment more, you can spend more time exploring different things. Therefore, you shouldn't treat the time that you spend learning something at work in the same way as you treat the time when you learn something in your own spare time. And second thing, in your pyramid, you might have put skills that you are not able to use or learn at work. However, it is always good to mention them to your manager, either during your one-on-ones or some other meetings that you might have. Your manager might remember about that or write it down. And when there is an opportunity at some point in time to learn the new skill or to participate in some project that will require certain technology that you want to learn, they might remember about you and they might suggest to add you to that project. Of course, it won't happen in every single case, but from my experience, it never hurt to mention to manager what you would like to learn. All right, here we are. I hope that you found this technique interesting and useful and you will try to write down your own pyramid of skills. In the next episode, I'm going back to the idea of good code and I will show you some micro improvements that you can introduce in your code to make it more readable and to make it easy to understand. I hope to see you next week then.